Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm here with Simon and Vic. And we are reacting to <laughs> Dumb Ways to Die. So many dumb ways to die. Dumb ways to die. Okay. So okay, many bro. dumb ways to die. Didn't have to bring out the vocals on us well, like that. I mean, I okay. thought... New KSI tune coming out soon. <laughs> well, I mean, hopefully I'm not on this list. Um... <laughs> Else you won't be hearing any of that. Uh, are we ready, boys? Oh, I'm ready. So ready. I said, are you ready? Aye, aye, aye Captain. Captain. Oh, I'm going to play the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb Ways to Die, UK edition. Just throwing it out there, I have a real fear that I'm gonna die in a horrendously stupid way. Like, I just feel like that would be the worst. Like, your legacy is just, just people laughing at how you went out. It's, it's gotta suck. You do live on the internet, so you will get memed. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah no matter how you die. You Honestly, you know what? Have fun. Have fun. Actually, no, wait. If I you, mean, you're dead, ultimately. Yeah. If, you, if you had cancer, God forbid, but if you had cancer, I don't think you'll get memed. Now nah, the internet's a dark place, you would. I was gonna say, I think it's part of Twitter would still. No, fair enough. Oh, well. Retired jockey Elena Struthers Gardner was carrying a mason jar drinking glass with a screwed on top. She's in that Stormzy run. And she had a metal straw attached. When the 60 year old woman, who had histories of falls and injuries, suddenly collapsed, the angle of the hard metal oh. straw impaled her through the eye oh, and caused this a fatal why, brain man, injury. plastic straws! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is. That is really unfortunate. I'm not laughing at her dying, by the way. It's just what Simon said about plastic straws. Yeah, bring them back, bro. Or paper straws. Paper, paper straws. Paper, paper yeah. It's yeah. us all the turtles. That's how I see it. <laughs> 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 okay. Honestly, fuck, fuck them turtles, bro. Oh, I'm, I won't stand for this turtle slander. Turtles are great. I like turtles. I like turtles. I like turtles. Mike Edwards was a minor celebrity, an acclaimed cellist, music teacher, and former member of the Electric Light Orchestra. Ooh, they're quite cool. While he was driving, Driving down the road near his home in Devon, something began rolling down a nearby hill. It was a massive hay bale weighing at least 1,300 pounds. Mad. It crashed into the van, killing him instantly. Oh, the people responsible for the hay bale went on trial and were found not guilty, but many of Edward's fans were less forgiving. I feel like that's Pete yeah, I saying I wouldn't say that was dumb. dumb. It was kind of, it was I, an unfortunate, unfortunate way to die. Yeah. Yeah. TV show The Goodies had everyone in stitches, but one man enjoyed it a little too much. Alex Mitchell of Norfolk burst out in hysterical laughter while watching and then proceeded to keel over from a massive heart attack. What? While no cause of death was determined, his wife was philosophical, thanking the TV program for giving her husband so much joy in his last minutes. But a key to his death came decades later, when his granddaughter died of a similar heart attack, pointing to an undiagnosed heart condition as the cause meaning Mitchell's heart may have been a ticking time bomb. Oh, wow. Again, I wouldn't call him dumb for that. No, no, where are he the went, dumb he went, out, he went out really happy dumb. as well. He went out happy, laughing. You love to hear it. Chew your food, eat slowly. We've all heard that from mom. But 51-year-old Darren Hickey didn't listen. When the wedding planner sampled a fish cake, he gulped it down quickly, only for the scalding hot fried morsel to burn his throat. He was in massive pain and he went to the hospital. They sent him home with painkillers. While relaxing at home, his throat began to swell up and he couldn't breathe. His partner rushed him to the hospital, but he died soon after from lack of oxygen. And fish cake was probably not on that menu. Uh, he's moving to his wife quick, you know. Wait, 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 wait. So, <laughs> how did he die? So he ate something too hot. He burnt his throat, and then his throat later on swelled up because it was, you know, inflamed and damaged. Inflamed, yeah. yeah. And then he couldn't breathe. Mad. I didn't know you could actually burn your throat. Well, normally you'd put food in your mouth, and yeah, you'd realize it's it's, too hot. it's stupidly hot. But sometimes, and then spit to be fair, it out or hold you, it. you like you get something that it's like when there's food inside it, and the food inside's really hot, so like. It's got, it's got like pasty yeah, or but, around the outside. Yeah, and but that like, normally burns you your mouth. Yeah. But and I, then you don't swallow it straight away. You normally like keep it in your mouth going like. <laughs> well, I feel like that's a bit of a human flaw for your throat to get inflamed. I mean, it's probably not designed to have something so, so hot in it. Mm. And to be fair, the human body has a lot of flaws. Yeah, to true. Be fair. Not like my penis though. Yep. No, that also has flaws. Well, it's always hitting them. <laughs> I don't know where we're going anymore. Yes, your penis is that big, it hits the floor. <laughs> it was the late 1800s, and Sir William Payne Galway was a powerful man. A retired member of Parliament and a baronet, he was looking forward to enjoying his retirement. He particularly liked to hunt and was able to snipe animals from afar without being endangered by them. Put him in face, clown. But his undoing would come from something much more harmless, a turnip. 
While out hunting what? one day, he what? tripped and the pointed turnip at his feet hit him in the wrong location. He died a short huh? time later from severe internal injuries at the age of no, 74. No, 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 I'm sorry, that's... <laughs> hey, <laughs> turnip. The doctor <laughs> turnip. <laughs> Oh my. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Imagine if it was one human oh, zero. I'm sorry, that is outrageous. How you could have died? <laughs> wow. See, see what I mean? You die in a stupid way. KSI will laugh at you. I'm so oh no, I can't laugh at this, man. This is fun. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yo, rest That's in peace. Turnip. <laughs> rest in peace, but man, that is that is an L. Oh my god. <laughs> Shit, bro. <laughs> Dead you should fight at that time. Oh no, 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 <laughs> no. Fuck no, it. No. Go, come on, oh, Dead. No, 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 no. No, play, play the video. Yeah. Play the video. Uh, uh, I love you, man. <laughs> it was 2018 and Atif Rafiq just wanted to see a movie. But while he was watching, his phone slipped out of his hand and became wedged under the electric footrest of his chair. Uh, Rafiq probably could have sought help from a theater worker. Instead, he tried to stick his head under the footrest, oh and God. the electronic oh no. seat trapped his head. The authorities had to break the seat to get Rafiq free, and by then, the unfortunate cinephile had died of cardiac arrest. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Why would you stick your head underneath? Oh man. That's terrifying. Uh. I mean, it's not terrifying because I know I'm never going to put myself in a situation where that ever happens. Yeah, fair. <laughs> the phone. It's, it's, it's the chair's phone now. The yeah, chair yeah, yeah, yeah phone. legit. Just, I mean, you say that, but you, you might not think of it. Ethan put his head under a, under a, a, yeah, a bowling, bowling lane. Yeah. Shit, yeah, bro. He could have been on this list. Yeah, genuinely. Genu Ethan yeah. could have made this list, yeah. Fuck. Thank goodness we have, like, good, like, safety regulations in bowling alleys in the UK. Because I bet in some countries, if you put your head under the bowling pin scooper thing, it would... You. Robert Cocking made his name as a watercolor artist. <laughs> Cocking. <laughs> but he was also an amateur scientist and tinkerer. And in 1837, he was working on an improved version of the parachute. He intended to demonstrate his new design using a cone shape. Looks like a UFO. At a festival in Vauxhall Gardens. A large crowd watched as Cocking jumped from 5,000 feet oh in a no. hot air balloon. Oh, but Cocking had miscalculated the weight of the parachute and he fell far too fast. The parachute turned inside out and Cocking crashed and was killed instantly. Well, every experiment has its trial and error, but some can only go wrong once. This next man died in the most mundane way possible, or did he? George Herbert, the fifth Earl of Carnarvon, was a prominent aristocrat with an adventurous spirit. He liked to fund expeditions to Egypt, most famously the search for the tomb of King Tut. It was there in Cairo where he met his end. He received a nasty mosquito bite on March 19, 1923, and then made the mistake of cutting it open while shaving. It became infected, and he died soon afterward of blood poisoning. I wouldn't say that's dumb. No, I, was, I mean, that's just, I mean, you lived at yeah. that time, and obviously medicine and all of that wasn't as advanced. Yeah. I'm sure his knife was a bit rusty or some shit. There's no turn it. <laughs> Corpus Christi College in Cambridge was a well-regarded school, and in 1667, it was under the strict eye of Master John Spencer. He kept a tight leash on his students, including his daughter Elizabeth. But Elizabeth was rebellious and had gotten into the habit of sneaking her paramour, John Betts, into her room. When John Spencer oh, suddenly no. entered his daughter's room, she shoved John Betts into a cupboard and was then hurried away by her father. By the time she had returned, the unfortunate <gasps> John Betts had asphyxiated in the wardrobe, Wait, leading to rumors that he and Elizabeth haunt the college to this day. That's crazy. Wait, if asphyxiated, so he just ran out of oxygen? He just opened the door. Yeah, what the fuck? What kind of wardrobe is that? Airtight, damn. Yeah, yeah, what? Maybe he went to sleep. Maybe he was like, I'm gonna be in here for a while, so I'll go to sleep, and then he like, do, I don't know. What happens if oxygen goes away while you sleep? Do you wake I guess up? you just pass out in your sleep. Do, yeah, would you, or would your body like, tell Oh, you like, hey, this ain't right. Or would you Wake go into up. shock and be like, <gasps> Yeah, I, I wonder. Yeah, I, I you'd probably start coughing and be like, Yo, the fuck? And then you'd pass out. So <laughs> you'd wake up and you have like five seconds then. <laughs> oh my gosh. My guy died for a beat. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> In the 13th century, one unfortunate king discovered that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Griffith ap Llewellyn ap Jorwith was heir what? to the Welsh throne. Say what? what is this name, man? Just call yourself Big G or something. Like, <laughs> fuck it out. <laughs> He'd been taken hostage by King John of England. He was imprisoned in the Tower of London, and in 1244, he decided to escape. He attempted to use a rope made of sheets and other garments to descend the tower, but he was a heavy man, not helped by years of imprisonment, and the rope soon snapped, getting him down from the tower in record speed, uh. with a very abrupt stop at the end. At least this next guy died in the right place. 
It was 1872 and Henry Taylor was serving as a pallbearer at a funeral. At some point, Taylor oh, tripped no. on a stone, losing control oh, of the coffin. Much. The other pallbearers were forced to let go as it twisted out of their hands uh -huh. and it landed with full force on Taylor's oh, chest God. and face. Bruh. John Lewis lived a quiet life in Gloucestershire with his wife Patricia and was an avid gardener. Patricia. But one day he mysteriously disappeared. A worried Patricia called the authorities after finding a burned lawnmower, but it was two weeks before John's body would be found. Forensic evidence pieced together the unfortunate story. John had been trying to light a bonfire and decided to hurry it up by pouring some gas. It worked a little too well. What? The raging fire spread to his clothes and John tried to put it out by jumping in the river. Injured, he was likely swept away to his death. Sometimes a good thing can be a bad thing if you take it too far. Basil Brown was a popular English Some of these health are just food terrific. buff in the 70s, yeah. but he took things to the extreme. He was a strong advocate of vitamin A and beta carotene as health supplements and was known to drink extreme amounts of carrot juice. When his skin started turning yellow, it should have been a warning sign, but he didn't heed it and was dead at the end of 10 days from liver failure. This led to many people worrying if carrot juice could be too dangerous, but evidence shows that the culprit was the vitamin A supplements he took 10,000 times the recommended dose. What? Oh. I mean, that's I mean, not what you expected then. That's pretty dumb. Yeah, that is, yeah. 10,000, oh my God. Bro, 10,000 of anything isn't good. <laughs> what about nuts? What? Why would you want balls in your face? Why well, I don't. Uh, no, I meant like as in the act of nothing. Yeah, but like to do that consecutively 10, 000... is probably a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, to do that ten thousand times a day, bro. Like uh, uh, the, the conversations we have are the most stupid. <laughs> They're more dumb than these dumb ways to die. Let's just continue. Jonathan Capewell was a lad obsessed with hygiene and was rarely seen without a deodorant spray. He was determined to eliminate any trace of body odor, using the sprays countless times a day. He was a teenager in good health, which is why it was a complete shock when he suddenly dropped dead of a heart attack. What? There was no obvious cause of death until the blood work came in. Turned out his blood had a massive buildup of butane and propane in it from the sprays, enough to stop his heart cold. Man. Jesus. Okay, that says a lot. Don't overdo it with the... I feel like that might have been like old deodorants as well. They used to have like really bad solvents and stuff in them. Oh, really? Oh, okay, fair. I don't think they're as unhealthy nowadays, but don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not a doctor. Jimmy Heseldon became a household name in the early 2000s when he purchased the Segway company. He was a huge fan of those famous scooters. Ah, uh, this one's famous. Really? Yeah. Only nine months after buying the company, he was out riding a Segway when he tried to get it out of the way of a man walking his dog. He had trouble stopping, and his Segway zoomed directly off a cliff. A tragedy killed by his own success. Yeah. Nicholas Comper was a pioneer of English aviation, the founder of one of the biggest early aircraft companies in the years after World War I. But he was also a man with a temper and a sharp wit, and that came back to haunt him. A prankster, Comper was lighting fireworks in a pub in 1939. Whoa, a passerby asked why he was <laughs> doing it, and Comper jokingly announced he was an IRA bomber. With the conflict with the Irish no laughing matter for the English, the bystander acted swiftly, punching Comper thinking he was taking out a threat. Comper hit his head and died soon after of oh, a hemorrhage. Man. But how could someone die from sleeping? Mark Gleason of Hampshire had a happy life and a great relationship with his girlfriend Tracy. But there was just one problem. His horrible snoring was ruining both of their nights. The couple was at a loss for how to stop it, and one night they hatched a not-so-great idea. Mark took some wine with sleeping pills, and the groggy snorer came up with the idea to use some of Tracy's tampons to plug his nose. Oh Unfortunately, my God. the combination of sleeping pills and the obstructed sinuses led to Gleason asphyxiating in his sleep. Huh. Yeah, no, that one. You're getting memed on the internet for that. Yeah, that's an L, fam. You're dying with tampons in your nose. It's done. <laughs> it's done for you. Football Twitter's having a field day. Oh, I'm so field oh, day, bro. Dude. Like, that for years, bro. Field day for years. Like, mad. Still, though, the tulip. <laughs> Yeah, that does uh, take the biscuit. I don't think our ways to die were as bad as the US ones. I don't think I, I would remember mess the US. that, but yeah, I could imagine uh, that they wouldn't be. Some of ours were even quite sophisticated, I'd say. <laughs> sure. All right, well, hopefully none of those happen to us and we all live long and happy lives. Thanks for watching. Nah, I want to live to like 70 and then that should be enough. Oh my god. <laughs>